adoration to him as always and I will of course should I say unfailingly pray in the language of heaven some may misunderstand some of them may try to misconstrue but one thing is certain right now in the presence of the Almighty God Elohim Adonai El Shaddai in heaven the angels are singing worshiping and praising the Most High with the very oldest language on the face of this very Hebrew uh, language. And that's how I'm going to pray. As you know, one in a chinek and nanke prumian in a chupoki cap, Yamabonian in a penagoja hands, so you know, banana chick. Don't you want a madden in Uberisi? Don't you want a banana or caca? But you know, I need to get everybody in Gossi. Maliton or Hugo. Ndi <laughs> Give <laughs> Having handed over our proceedings to heaven, we must therefore proceed unfailingly and very speedily to preach this very gospel that we have been mandated to preach. Welcome, my amazing viewers. Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are connecting from. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you so much and remember us. Remember, in this channel, we talk about the situation of the contraption called Nigeria. We talk about the plight of the indigenous people in that very contraption called Nigeria. Every indigenous tribe, regardless their religion, regardless their location, we talk about their plight. That is what we speak about. We don't preach hate speech on this channel. We are saying it just the way it is. Without being politically correct, we bring the problem of that contraption to the front burner that people might know the truth of the situation. That is what we are doing. And we will continue to do so. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they do. We will continue to speak the truth. The truth and nothing but the truth. Meanwhile, before we proceed, I will urge you to join the prayers that we are praying with our Sunday Mass and the Canon. I have to remind you about the prayer every now and again. It is not yet late to join. We are on the last phase of the prayer. If you have not joined, this is the time for you to join. Pray more than you have ever done because we can see the effects of the prayers. They are coming out. A lot of things are happening. Some that you have not yet heard of. Some that you have heard of. Some that you have seen. A lot of miracle is happening. And more is going to unfold. That is why we urge you to pray with us. Wherever you are. Whatever platform you are using. Use it to speak about the platform. Speak about the plight of the people of that contraption. The plight of the Biafrans. The plight of the Juduans. The plight of the Middle Bertans. The plight of all the indigenous tribes that are being killed in that very contraption called Nigeria. We speak about the situation. That is why we are all here, speaking about it the way it is. Today, we will talk more about the visit of Muhammad Buhari to Imo State. As you all know, it is now very clear, more than ever, that the people who they call politicians in that contraption called Nigeria in the southeastern part of Nigeria are not in control of the situation. These people, in as much as we know, they are people who we are being appointed by the judge of government, they were never elected. Every single soul you see participating in politics in Nigeria, in the southeastern part of Nigeria, are being appointed. They are being handpicked. They were not elected. 
you might tell me that you're going to the booth to cast votes. Well, it doesn't matter how many times you go to the booth to cast your votes. It doesn't matter how many votes you give to them. They will choose whom they want to choose. And they will give you the result they want to give you. So your vote doesn't count. When you look at it critically, Imo State is a very practical example. The governor of Imo State, even though when they tried to ring, they were not able to ring, they decided to do it by force through their court, took somebody who came fourth, fourth position, and brought him to come and rule. Fourth position, they didn't take second, they didn't take third, they took the fourth position and brought him to rule Imo State. Tell me, how can you justify that? What law justify that? What kind of excuse can you give in such situation? And this is not just an Imo State. This has been happening in the whole southeastern part of Nigeria, only that we are not careful to know this. Thank God for the coming of this gender with Muhammad Buhari, who is late already. Thank God for the late Muhammad Buhari because there are so many things that have been hidden that we didn't know. But this Muhammad Buhari, being that God himself, Chuko Karim, have hardened his heart to make us know what is happening in the country of God, God hardened his heart and he began to do things without minding. Today, there is no longer anything that is hidden in that country of God, Nigeria about the secret of the gender weed against the indigenous people in that country of God, Nigeria. Today, we know the plan of the gender weed against the indigenous people. It is no longer hidden. Anybody in that country of God, Nigeria who says that he doesn't know the plan of the gender weed to dominate the people, to kill the people, to Islamize and fulanize Nigeria, he is either joking or he is pretending or he is a willing tool in the hand of the devil himself we all know what is happening this has been going on you can see the visit that the man that they have forced on him state organized he invited his paymaster to come and uh, and, and and spit on the on the grave of, of, of our heroes and i thank my dear friend brothers in Imo state Imo state spoke loudly that he is not welcome. Imo State spoke loudly that he is not welcome in Imo State. It was a ghost town, completely. I don't need to show the video. I have shared a video yesterday, and there are so many videos about the issue on the internet. You all have seen. But the main important issue is that we have to know that even as even even for the fact that they said they have the power, they have the money, they have the finance, they have the federal might, yet they do not have say on what happens in Imo State. Whatever game you see they are playing, whatever drama they are playing within themselves, it's among themselves. But the masses, the owners of the land, do not have anything to do with their politics. They do not participate in anything that has to do with whatever they are doing. Every game that they are playing in the government house in Imo State belongs to the ginger weed and hokus of the man. It was a failure, a total failure. Even when they tried to hide it, they couldn't be able to hide it. You see the way they were covering the events. The cameraman, the dubious cameramen we have in Nigeria with their dubious channels. All the media in Nigeria that went to cover that occasion, you see the way they were holding their camera. They will never show you the crowd. They just focus on a particular place and begin to show you where people gather. That is their strategy. They were showing where people gather. But we have people on the ground who got the exact picture of what happened. And we all know the exact picture of what happened. They will only deceive those of them who are outside the country. They will deceive the international community because... They feel they can do so, but they can't deceive us. We own the land and we will not allow them to deceive us. That is why we flood the social media with the exact picture and videos of what transpired in Imo State. The people who are called themselves politicians have no control, they have no say. IPOB, under the leadership of Omar Nandekan, says what happened in the southeastern part of Nigeria, in the whole Biafra land. Whatever he says happens. He doesn't mind. They can be bragging with their police and army or whatever. They, even with their threats, they were not able to make a difference. They were not able to make a difference. They only relax back to their propaganda, saying that people were afraid to come out. People respect IPOB, respect ESN, and respect Asuna Mazin and the camp, not being afraid. They respect them because they are doing the right thing. The only people who the Southeast and the Biafans are afraid of are the political side because they are the people who kill them. They kill them with their police, kill them with their army, kill them by starvation, steal away all their resources for their own personal use. That has been happening. And they have shown it again in Imo State. You can see the, the, the British manicure that they invited to Imo State. The imposter they invited to Imo State. When you look at his appearance and the way he did, you will know that that man is an imposter. 
whatever he says and whatever he was doing there was something that he has studied and mastered. They have told him what to do and what not to do. That's why you see his speech very brief. Everything was fast, fast and he ran off back to Abuja where he came from. This is the drama they are showcasing in Imo State all the time. Not only Imo State, in so many other states. And the most disturbing one is that that thing you saw, that drama you see on Imo State, they said they spent 700 million naira. 700 million to organize that event you see. Of which most of the money went to hiring people. Every single individual you see in that very place where Muhammad Buhari was standing, was hired. At, ex, except the people who came from Abuja with him, every other person you see there, we are paid for them to be there. They went to the state of going to Kogi State to hire people. Went to the other neighboring state to hire people. In Imo State, they went and hired all the Hausa men in Imo State. They hired them and paid them to come and attend that location. When they flashed them and tell you, this is Igbo youth, this is Igbo youth, those are Fulanis in Imo State. They were the people that they used to do the occasion. They couldn't hide it. No matter how they tried to hide it, it was impossible to hide. I want to share with you a video. After the occasion, you will see the Malams, the Fulanis and Jawin, where they were going, going away. After they were finished, Hired crowd, watch the video and see them go home. No, the camera. After watching, you can see what transpired. Not only this, not only there are so many other videos, but I just want to share this with you. There are so many other videos. And the most, the most exposing one was after the most, after the thing they did. You know, sometimes when we say it is not a success, people might not believe because we are the ones saying it. When we say that whatever they are doing, people are not in support, it will be as if we are the ones saying it. But I will show you the, 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 the video of what the deputy governor was saying. After the whole drama, the deputy governor was mad that they did not get enough people according to how he asked them. That after spending 700 million naira, they were not able to get crowd for them. He was mad. Just within the occasion, within something, he was mad that people who did not come out to support his government. That is to show you that the people have rejected Hobu Zodemma, Buhari, and whatever he has to offer. Watch the video. <laughs> This is exact situation. 
this is the exercise of what upon all this people will see all this and they will still be talking about hope talking about Buhari. Bia friends have spoken. We want out of this very contraption. It doesn't matter what you think, it doesn't matter how you feel. You can be envy for all I care because you're not the one superheading the movement. Mazin Nandikano has proven himself genuine. And every respect Mazin Nandikano has today, he ended it. Mazin Nandikano ended his respect from Bia France. He worked for it. That is why he's been respected. And whatever he says, that then people follow it. You can be envy for all I care. Even with all the things that are playing out, knowing fully well that these so governors, so called governors and political elite and one are not in control of what happened in the southeast part of Nigeria, people still deny the fact. That is why I want to play a video for you of one of the Fulu Fulu land. One of the Fulu Fulu land, a man whom I thought was reasonable, not until when he showed himself as very unreasonable. Even others are repenting. Up to now, he has not repented. I'm talking about no one else than Andy OKK. You know Andy OKK, who, 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 who is still living in bondage? He thought that politics is a drama. Andy OKK still living in bondage up to now. Even when some people whom they went into bondage with have, re have removed themselves and are free. Andy OKK is still in bondage, still defending Buhari as we speak. I will play with you a video what Andy Okeke has to say when he was interviewed about the situation of what happened in the name of state. Listen and hear what Andy Okeke said in his interview. Um, if you would assess these two sides, what would be your opinion? How would you, I mean, how would you appraise um, the effort of the government to achieve unity or to strengthen the unity of Nigeria vis-a-vis the way Nigerians are perceiving it and rather asking to break up. What is your own position on these two subjects? All right. First of all, I want to tell you that there is no part of Nigeria now that is shouting that they want to break away. <laughs> There is no part of Nigeria. A lot of a lot of a lot of people are why am I saying okay but, great? No, why am I why am I saying this? Yes, why am I saying this? Yorubas have their leadership, they have their religious leaders, they have their traditional leaders, they have their sociocultural leaders, they have their political leaders. There is no sect of leadership from this cadre that has made a meeting and reached a resolution that they want to break from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now, the Igbos, Igbos have their sociocultural leadership or Haneze. They have their traditional leadership, the Igwes. They have their political leadership, the governors, senators, etc. They have their religious leaders, the bishops, the reverend fathers, the old or whatever. Now, none of them, none of them has sat down to say they want to leave Nigeria. Same thing with uh, South South, same thing with North, same thing everywhere. That a group of people are exercising their freedom of speech and they are making utterances or comments does not mean and can never mean that the people from that side are talking about secession. And let me tell you the difference. In 1967, before Biafra was declared, the then governor, Governor Dume Wojuku, he was the governor of the Eastern region. That is political leadership. He had his council of traditional leaders. That's traditional leadership. Same thing with social cultural leadership. He assembled them before reasonably all of them came together to declare secession. So please, you have to understand the difference between that people are exercising their fundamental right to freedom of expression. And then you're saying that how, how can I come and say the Yorubas want to leave Nigeria? Which sort of their leadership has said so? Or you want to tell me now that the people that are expressing their ex 
expressing their right to freedom of session that they are now superior to the only of Ife, or let they will not say me, something, let and me they will not say they have talked to. Let me quickly just bring something in there. So do I don't, know that, I don't agree. Yes. Good. Do you know that there may be? Do you know that a leadership can be illegitimate but, sometimes when they do not have support of the mass of their people? Now let us not go into that okay. because you, 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 you. If we go into that, you say that lawyers, uh, you will soon begin to abuse lawyers. <laughs> okay. Let me, let me put it. <laughs> Let me, let, me, say, let me take another one. That, let, me, uh, let me refer uh, to you may say by that by that citing uh, an instance. Good. Let me cite an instance. You may, say, you, may say that, um, you may say that the leadership is unpopular. But you cannot okay. say that a leadership is illegitimate. Uh, illegitimacy has to do with legality or illegality. So once <laughs> leadership and you know that legality Legal. in Nigeria in most Legal. cases is purchased. But let me no, let me even leave that. Yeah. Let me come whatever to it is. Did you see? Did you see the situation today in Imo State, mm. where yeah. where the people you yeah. may be stylishly dismissing as not being the authority or constituted declare the seat at home, and then the whole town, the whole city was just like ghost town. The president came to town. <laughs> And the people rather respected <laughs> the declaration of the people you want to dismiss as not constituted authority. How would you appraise that? Like people did not come out. Now I, I I don't know whether you saw, I don't know whether you saw the same thing I saw. Because I saw a it's very a... warm welcome to the press. I saw a very but warm saw, welcome to but the But you president. saw the city. You, yes, but you saw the city Good. generally. No, you know, I think you're I think your city. Shegu, I think you're I think you're making a mistake here. <laughs> okay. Good. When a president <laughs> is passing, when a president is passing living in Abuja, all the roads is going to pass are declared empty and blocked. All the <laughs> but you roads remember, are going to pass. But you remember that this Wait. particular one has antecedents. No, let me, every let time we tell you, at home, it is not because president is coming to town. And people obey it voluntarily. Now, Shegu, when you ask a question, you allow me to answer. Okay. Or I will listen. So that you yes, ask but I want answer. I want you to answer the right question. No, <laughs> Not, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. Now, let me tell you something. If the president is coming to a state. You can only come to that place by invitation. Now, let me tell you what you don't understand. When we are doing our convention in Abuja, we want to do our convention. On that day, all the buildings around, all the offices around, if the president is going to come, they are told not to come to work. They block the whole city from certain road and then when you have the invitation you will you will go to another place and join a bus that will take you to the venue these are security measures and these are when things have not gone down security wise like this so, so what you are seeing that the president is going there, there are all security measures. All the people, oh, don't you know the risk involved? The president is going to travel from the airport down to the venue and he's going to go around to commission projects. So all those roads will be blocked and people will be told to stay at home when you are not invited because you don't know who is going to be a security risk. I am telling you the truth. I'm not trying to defend anything. And you know, he's going to the East. I don't want to say much, but you understand what I'm saying. But what I'm telling you is pure security procedure. So all the people you're seeing there that the are invited. Deserted. No, the whole city should be locked down. Whether mm. it is Lagos, whether it's in Abuja. I've told you when we are doing a program in Abuja, you lock the whole of if you are doing it in, in uh, Ego Square, 
from Asokoro. You lock down from Asokoro. You lock down from um, uh, Constitution Avenue. You lock all those places down. And when you have your tag, you're invited. You will you will go to boss to drive you to Ego Square. This is security, pure security issues. And you will meet very trained military officers that don't know you. They will be imported from, from, from maybe Medugri or from Cross River. They don't know you. They don't want to know who you are. If you're not wearing the tag, you won't cross that place, wherever you are. So these are all security measures. Whoever is telling you that is because somebody says it at home, this and that, in this visit, is not telling you the truth. All the people that we are invited, they were all there. It was a very colorful event. Maybe you will still see more of it with time. Okay, great. Um... You can see that some people are bent on destroying themselves. Some people are totally bent on destroying themselves. You can see since he started this, his, this is stupid political wickedness. He has lost relevance. This was somebody who people celebrated before, not knowing that he was a monster. Today, he's the one that is supporting everything that is not right in that country of God, Nigeria, and the UKK supports it. He supports everything that is not right. The full, uh, full video of that very interview, I'm going to post it on my other channel. If you go there, you will see the whole interview and see the trash this man was saying. I only cut out this poly portion to share with you. With all this video that I have shared to you on what happened and what I fire, and the OKK is still denying that the Imo State people came out to support that and why the city was scanty was for security reason. He's telling us that why the city was scanty is for security reason. It was intentionally done. This was the it's it's really so sad how people come and open their mouth and say whatever they want to say, feeling that people are ignorant and people don't know what they you know. Dear friends are wiser than than you can think of. Breakfast are wiser. This is what somebody who called himself a responsible person is representing, calling himself a lawyer. Supporting everything that is, is evil, everything that is against Biafran, that is what he's supporting. And he will end up the same way other people ended up. You know the political system of Nigeria, unless you go and pay allegiance to the Janja weed in Sokoto, you are nobody. And he has done it. He has sold his soul already. But he is going to come back in disgrace. Full assurance. Full assurance he come here, come back in disgrace. People who see the truth and they will never speak about it. Who see white and tell you that it is black. Thank God for Asuna Mazen Nandekan who have done a great job. Mazen Nandekan has woken up even a child in the southern part of Nigeria. We know what is right to do and we know who is our leader. We know what to ask for and we know what we need. All we ask for is referendum for us to go our separate ways. We are no longer part of this very ginger weed cocktail British country. We are not part of it. We are beer friends and we remain beer friends. It doesn't matter what they say. They will kill us. We will kill them. At the end of the day, Biafra will come. May Chuko Kukabi am a guide and protect us from the Mazin and the Kano. May Chuko Kukabi am a strengthen us from the Mazin and the Kano. May Chuko Kukabi am a give him good health. Heal him from every weakness. Give him strength so that he will come out stronger than ever. We believe that Asuna Mazin and the Kano is coming out stronger. And he's coming out with the flag of Biafra lifted high. Very, very soon we will all sing the national anthem of Biafra. In Biafra land with Asuna Mazin and the Kano standing before us. And we will rejoice. In that land, flowing with me like a honey. Thank you so much for watching my program. I remember less. Bye bye. See you again on the next video.